Hey folks, greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Good to have you along with me today. I want to bring another word from the Lord. Um, probably the most well-known story in the Bible is the story of David and Goliath. I mean, it is the classic underdog story, the one that we all probably at some point in our life can associate with, because I'm sure that a lot of us at, from time to time have been the underdog. And to know that there is victory for all of us today, no matter how big uh, the situation is or the giant is or whatever the condition that you're dealing with right now, we know from Scripture that whatever has happened in Scripture is a spiritual precedent, and that means that it can happen again. So we're glad for all the examples that we have of people in the Bible overcoming and letting us know that we can overcome as well. Because the enemy will be a bully. The enemy is a bully. The enemy will harass you. The enemy will taunt you. The enemy will make you feel like that you don't have any faith, that God can't do anything, that he won't do anything. But we know that that is a liar. But I want to take you today to 1 Samuel chapter 17. And I'm going to begin reading at verse 55. And this is, I find very interesting. Um, a lot of people, when they read the story of David and Goliath, they kind of stop at the point where David um, finally does Goliath in and kills Goliath. But there's so much more beyond that that is interesting as well. And I want to I read this to you today. 1 Samuel chapter 17, beginning at verse 55. <clears throat> when Saul saw David going out against the Philistine, he said to Abner, the commander of the army, Abner, whose son is this youth? And Abner said, As your soul lives, O king, I do not know. So the king said, Inquire whose son this young man is. And this, this is where I want you to really pay attention. So I want to say it again. So the king said, Inquire whose son this young man is. Then as David returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, Abner took him and brought him before Saul with the head of the Philistine in his hand. And Saul said to him, Whose son are you, young man? So David answered, I am the son of your servant, Jesse, the Bethlehemite. Now, something that we need to pay attention to here is that this conversation begins after David had left the tent of Saul after Saul had tried to gird David with his own armor. And of course, as we know the story, David looks and says, I have not proved these. David had never been in battle with that kind of weaponry on. And besides that, we know from Scripture as well that King Saul was a head taller than anybody else in Israel. He was a big man. He was a tall man. And so there, there's no way that David would have been able to, to move uh, quickly and easily as he needed to to fight Goliath with that armor on. So when David leaves the tent, Saul begins to question, well, who's, whose son is this anyway? <clears throat> and that, that's what I want to talk about for a few minutes. Whose son is this? Um, you know, the, the bravery and the courage of David is very inspiring. I mean, here are all these men of war Saul himself being such a, uh, the Bible records what a tremendous warrior that Saul himself was. And to have all these men who were, you know, spent years fighting battles, they were all terrified. They were, they were afraid. They, no matter how much skill they had, no matter how many other men or armies they have defeated, there was something so belittling about Goliath that, I mean, none of them did anything. So to have this young man, and I know sometimes we we chalk bravery, bravery, excuse me, up to being just something of youth. Well, they don't really, they don't know what they're doing. They're just getting caught up in the moment. They're just getting, um, you know, that's his brother accused David of that when David began to ask questions about what will be done for the man. And, and his brother basically tells him, you're just a punk that's come out here and you're caught up in the, the hype of a battle and the flashing swords and armor and everything else and you're just caught up in some fairy tale thing and you really need to go back and keep the sheep. But that wasn't the heart of David. That was not the mind of David. David, David, his courage resulted from his relationship with God. When David would keep those sheep in the wilderness and moments that he would spend out there alone, you know, he, he began to hone not only his skill with the um, 
the, the uh, excuse me, the sling, but he began to hone his relationship with God. All those hours alone as David began to watch the sheep and begin to see the dangers of keeping sheep and the, the dangers that are out there for every one of us, he began to understand. That's what David could write in Psalms chapter 23, the Lord is my shepherd. David, David understood life from the perspective of a shepherd and therefore he could understand God because he is our great shepherd. And so I look at this and it's interesting that, you know, that that this relationship that David had with God began to instill courage in him. And, and it's true, the longer we live for God, the more courageous we should be. The longer we live for God, the more the more faith that we ought to have in our life, the more that we live for God, you know, the, the more, you know, we should be able to or, or be willing to step out and, and do something courageous for the Lord. And so that's that's where David's courage comes from. David courage, David's courage comes from the fact that he had developed that relationship with God. And Saul, Saul seen that courage, and Saul seen something in David, but for some reason Saul never asked the question about who he was until he left the tent. And so Saul asked the question, like I said, this is something very interesting. He inquired, he said, whose son this is this young man? Who, who does he belong to? And Abner said, I have, I have no idea, he said. And so it wasn't until after David ends up killing Goliath that they finally find out whose son he is. You know, because here, here's the, the idea. To have, to be such a brave young man, to be such a courageous young man, what must have his father have been like? You see, in Jewish culture, a lot of times the son would be a representation of the father. Uh, you know, and for us to be an overcomer, the Bible said that we are more than conquerors. I can do all things through Christ. We have we have so many scriptures that tell us that, hey, you're more than what you think you are. You're more than what you feel. You're more than what fear is trying to tell you are, that you're an overcomer. To understand how much of an overcomer we are, we have to realize what our identity is. And just like in the days of David, our identity comes from the Father. Hallelujah. So notice something. Saul didn't ask, what's his name? Saul didn't ask, where's he from? Saul wanted to know, whose son is he? What is your dad's name? And the same question is being asked here today. Whose name do you come in? Whose name do you Operate in because I want to tell you something. There's a lot of times the enemy is looking and said, Man, I, who, who is this guy? Who is this guy? And here's something Jesus said this Jesus made the statement. He said, He said, I do what I see my father do. And he said in John chapter 5, verse 43, He said, I am come in my father's name. I come in my father's name. Jesus also made another statement. He said, If you have seen me, you have seen the father. So when David, when Goliath, uh, excuse me, Saul says to Abner, whose son is he? He said, I want to know who his father is. Because sons, most of the time, or were supposed to be a direct representation of the father. And see, the same thing is true with us today. We should be true representations of the father. We get our identity from the Father. We get our courage from the Father. Jesus said the things that I do, he said, I do the will of my Father. So when Jesus came, he was the true representation of God. The Bible said in him dwelt the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He came in that true representation of the Father. That's why he said, I am come in my Father's name. He said, I do these things in my Father's name. And here's another meaning. He said, I am clothed with the authority. This is basically what Jesus was saying. I am clothed with the authority of the Father. Do you see yourself? Can you see yourself in the Father? 
Can you see the Father in you? Saul said, whose son is this young man? He didn't ask David's name. He said, I want to know who his dad is. I want to know who his father is. Because for this young man to be so courageous, for this young man to have such confidence, for this young man to have such faith, his father must be the same way. Tell me who his father is. And you know, I feel like this, that, that I feel the enemy asks that same question. That when we, because every one of us, I'm tell you something, when God anoints us, when God, God loves us, the Father loves us. We have the Father's love. And because we have the Father's love, we have the Father's power. We have the Father's victory. He loves us. And, and, I believe there's times the enemy, when he sees you in a situation that maybe the enemy thought, this is going to be the thing that's going to tear him down. I'm going to get him with this one. I'm going to tear, I will destroy them with this thing. And all of a sudden, you're holding that enemy's head. I don't mean to be gross, but you're holding that enemy's head. And you have, when David came into the tent and they asked him the question, who's your daddy? David was holding the head of Goliath in his hand. That was his trophy. Then I believe there's been some devils over the years that have said, who is this? Who is this? You know, it's 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 amazing. It's a, because the Spirit of God lives in you. And when Saul, you know, when Paul, excuse me, the apostle, had been had been casting out devils, the Bible said there was uh, seven sons of a priest named Sceva who tried to cast devils out of a man. And, and the, the devil asked the man, he said, Jesus, I know, and Paul, I know, but who are you? They had nothing to identify them with the Father. But I don't believe that's the case with us today. I don't believe that's the case with you today. I believe it beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are more than a conqueror through him that loved you. You are an overcomer that we can do all things through Christ and that we are walking in the identity and the power and the authority of the Father. So when you face your giants, and you're going to face them, when you face these circumstances in your life that, that other people run away from, that other people look and say, I can't do that. I can't, I can't defeat this. I can't overcome this. Don't let that get inside your head. Don't don't let what other people have fell over and what other people have struggled with and what other people ha have lost their integrity over. Or other people have have you know just just I can't do it. I can't I can't face it. None of them even dared step out. Don't let that don't let those things stop you from being who the Father created you to be and he created you to be an overcomer. Dare to step out in faith. Dare to be different. Dare to face these things in your life that are bigger than you, stronger than you, that are overcoming you, overwhelming you, and let it know. And David, because this is what David said, he said, I did not come to you with spears and swords and these weapons that you've got attached to you. He said, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. David was saying, I come in my father's name. Just like the descendant of David, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, said, I am come in my father's name. And what did Jesus do? He defeated every giant that you and I will ever face in our life. So don't be discouraged today. Be encouraged because the devil's going to ask a question. Whose child are you? Whose son are you? Because they're going to see something in you that maybe you didn't even see yourself. The enemy's going to see not a pushover, not someone that can be bullied, not somebody timid and scared, not somebody who doesn't understand who they are, not somebody that doesn't believe, but he's going to see someone who's coming in the power and the authority of the Father. And he's going to know just like David let Goliath know, this day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand. So amen. Praise God. That's exciting to hear that today. I'm glad that you spent this time with me. I pray the Lord will bless you today. I pray the Lord will make you fearless and give you the, the spirit and power of the Father to fall upon your life today and let you know that you can do all things through Christ. God bless you.